favorite EMC in uh, in Auckland, Welly, down south, and anywhere else. Okay, we were talking. <laughs> my favorite Auckland EMC is. My favorite Auckland EMC is Tex Swift. Yeah, that would have been. Oh man, it's real hard. I don't know if anyone, but like Marika is obviously. I think all time Marika is probably my favorite EMC in Auckland, but I love Tex Swift, man. The freestyle he did on Major 6, I reckon that's the best one ever. And he's the man. He's so dope. Wellington, I have to go with Flows because I like Flows because he's always led the way performance wise. Like he should get a gold medal instantly for his. Live performance because he's incredible, you know. Just I don't I've think he, to a lot of people and a lot of people say flows for stage performance. Yeah, his stage performance. I think um, in New Zealand. Yeah, I mean he came on the Major Five Six tour and he's just incredible, you know. His energy is amazing, and Christchurch is definitely model. Like I don't think, I think Scrub has always been really good, but he just got great. Do you know what I mean? Uh, elsewhere, I think Jay Roach is really good. I like him a lot. I've always liked that kid. And the other dude I really like is uh, Mike Pipes. Michael Pipes is really, really cool. I really dig his shit. I think that it's it's so different that it deserves, it's got a lot of merit, you know? And Mike himself is such a cool guy. So yeah, he, he'd be one of my top five. What is your favorite major flavors mixtape in New um, Zealand? Probably number two. <laughs> number two will probably be my favorite. I know lots of people like number one. Heaps of people like number one. Like I tour with oh, sure. Soldier now, now, and and oh, he is his sure. favorite one. Yeah, but oh, everyone likes sure. one because I think it's just it was just really crazy. Like I mean, when I made it, I didn't know, really know what the fuck I was doing, but yeah, it just came off real good. Um, what do you think of like uh, DJ mixtapes or bootlegs? We you know, get permission to use it. You, what's your? I love mixtapes. You know, what's, you, what's that? Do you reckon? Um, like a lot of people complain that you know about the bootlegs and da 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 da. Do you reckon? I mean, I personally love them as well. Mm. I think um, I just love mix CDs. To be honest, I love them. I know that there is a lot of things you know, like you download them now or people ripping off other people's music. Oh well, you know, this is the world we live in. You know, the Ti album turned up online yesterday. I can't buy it. Buy it yet. What are you gonna do? It's just the way of the world right now. It's not good, and I can't really be openly seen to be condoning it. I don't think I will openly say that. I don't think anyone should download Artel or Hip Hop because it's hard enough as it is for us here that we know it's hard. Do you know, if some Aussie MC and I want to download his record, and I don't really know who he is or what his experience is, then I can't really comment on that. But I know how hard it is here, so it's kind of like it's probably I just don't approve of that. But um. Oh, I mean, you know, when I get to New York, the first place I go is straight down to Canal Street and buy every like, CD I can get my hands on. I love it, so that's just me, though. Do you reckon um, people focus most of their money on, on record sales when they could be maybe going and focusing on doing heaps of gigs? Or? Yeah, I think so. I think that people need to look, because in America, all your money is show money. Like, I know there's this infamous Wendy Day article about how an artist's money is broken down and they have million dollar budgets and they never get any money back. That's true. Like Fat Joe for instance, his last album didn't do so well and like it, it broke even on a multi-million dollar deal. But he's making like 50 grand a, a gig doing live gigs. That's where all the money is. Akon is a millionaire off, off his show money. Fat Joe is a millionaire off his show money. They make money off gigs. So yeah, absolutely. I think people should need to back themselves a little more like you know, people say, oh, you know, I can't really afford to go on tour, I can only do this, well, just do it. You know, invest in yourself, as you would do when you invest in a record and put it out. So I think that, yeah, shows shows is where it's at. That's where it's at for me, you know, doing shows. And if you if you have a good show, then that's warranted. If you have a shit show, then maybe you shouldn't put in that record, you know? How do you reckon um, New Zealand is going to get more um, people at their show? It's tough. I mean, you just have to be something a little more unique. I mean, take a leave from Flo's book and just be have a good life show, work on that. I see too many people do a show and they wander around looking at the floor. I wouldn't pay to go see that, you know? Yeah. And I've been to a gig in New York and they did that and everyone left. And then they certainly won't go back again, so... Just because, that's what I'm saying, it's just because you, you can rap in a studio and can you take it into the library? And I think it means a lot. And I think that it needs to be 
something that people are figuring it out, figuring out, you know. Yeah. Do you listen to any other music? Yeah, I like, like I like a lot of different music. I think I don't like I like, I like a lot of old reggae and punk stuff, but I listen to old music. I don't listen to like much of the new stuff. Just bullshit. Britney music. Spears. <laughs> no, I mean I check I keep it on everything because I have to. I think that ever will have been something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever play like a, say Britney Spears or something if you were going to get paid good money for it? Um, I don't know. I mean I know I've done a few Christmas parties. I play some pretty dodgy music, but you know I got myself into that situation, realized it, and did it. Okay, whatever. Um, are you gonna? Because Ty Regis moves to, is moving to Australia. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking of moving to Australia? Mm -hmm. Never will, because I've got kids, so I can't. But I think it's a good move. I mean, Aussie's a big market. People don't. I don't think people fully understand how big that market is. You know, I can do I can do three gigs in ten hours in that city, and do it every weekend. It's a huge city, and if, as a D, as a DJ, good city to be in for sure. Um, you know, I can do. And up in Brisbane, you can do four gigs in four days and do quite well out of it. So it's it's just population, man. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, what was it like, like kicking in, like Premier here? It's cool. I mean, a lot of the people that I meet that are of so-called celebrity status, they just seem like us. You know, when we were hanging with Premier, he's just one of us. He tells stupid, dirty jokes and picks his nose, you know, like anyone else. So I think, um, yeah, I guess it's just. It's it's good fun, of course, and it's like a moment. But it, when you're in the moment, sometimes it's like you know, you figure out these guys are actually just like us. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Is there anyone that you meet that's like grow up himself? Like who would be the most up? Most up to himself. Self person. I think. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Chingy's the biggest dickhead I've ever met in my life. Chingy. <laughs> Chingy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> God's such a dick. <laughs> I actually gave up on the interview and somebody else did it. I just couldn't do it. He's a dog. Yeah, do you reckon he'll ever come back? Come oh, for sure. Be. I'm sure he'll come back. <laughs> but he he's just his attitude was pretty short. He's on stage at Summer Jam or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's, um, and he's, yeah, I didn't like him very much. I'd say who was cool was Young Buck was really cool. Really awesome guy. Really, he, was, he was a great interview and he's a nice guy. Some, it surprises you sometimes, you know? Um, I had a question in my head, I just forgot it. So I'll just think of another question. <laughs> uh, your biggest regret? My biggest regret? Not going to Australia earlier. Not going to Australia yeah. earlier? I should have, like I started in Australia, I started touring two years ago, released an album last year. I should have done it five years ago, because I would have been cranking by now. Because, because, if that market is that big, it can be lucrative for you, and can just set you up, because I don't really want to be doing this forever, touring, releasing records at some point I would like to just have some normality in my life and if I had done that five years to now I would have been way ahead of the game it would have helped. Do you think like um, like you got your foundation here do you reckon you would have been as successful as you were over in Australia if you did have moved over five years? No because I'm successful over there because of what I did here. So in reality you yeah, could no, have anyway. Yeah, I know, but I would have, <laughs> I would have, I would have rolled the dice and tried it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I would have rolled the dice and tried it, but it, yeah, I mean, because the groundswell for people going to my gigs over there because of what I've done here. Yeah. So there's heaps of expats, but they would bring all their mates with them, and it kind of ballooned out from there. So yeah, it would have been a gamble at the same time, and yeah, maybe it wouldn't have worked. But if I had known what I know now about over there as a industry, I might have made some different decisions. You're a pioneer, New Zealand hip hop pioneer. Um, who else do you reckon considers a pioneer? I don't think, I don't think I'm a pioneer. I was just, I'm just older. So I, I was around <laughs> at the beginning. Do you know what I mean? I, the, the true pioneer of, the true pioneers of, of hip hop and Aotearoa is a pop posse. No doubt about it. They were the people. They were the people that I first looked at, and that got me inspired. Because I was already starting to get into the culture when I was a kid. But that was the crew that kicked it off for me, and I think that would be true of a lot of people. Is that in reality, when I looked to what I was doing, because when they came along, I hadn't really got active yet. So in reality, I feel 
because people do put me in that pioneer thing and I think I've done a lot which warrants being doing being involved for as long as I have but for me personally I think the true pioneers are those guys and I think that TP is also the other guy because he was the real first DJ in this country so I th even though I've never ever met him and I've never seen him DJ I am in awe of his respect that he garners from people around me so I you know just me personally I think that you know D Word, Beware, DLT, Wire, the whole Steve, the whole Tenwana, that crew that is the hip hop pioneers and why because it was a moment in time that means everything man like if they had never done that video tier two way before we'd even know, even know how to start to make a video they had already made one and they made that video for rave pictures out at the hut train station dude we were nowhere near that you know we were only just learning but trying to buy a tenter when they had already done it dude that is the point that's the true pioneers sure we got other underground legends you know there's other people involved in the scene around that time but they were the ones that put a flag in the ground and of course it, you know for me personally it was really relevant because it was Maori message hard I mean I mean it, it, it spoke a lot a lot to me that's that's my point used to me and for the watchers out there they are still doing their thing a lot of people think they're not still doing their thing I went to a gig of years about a month ago you know whether or not they're um <coughs> it's relevant today, probably not. But you know, it's like when Cool Hook Hook walks in a room. You know, I remember we had, I was at a ITF gig, and Cool Hook Cool Hook walked in the room, and everyone just stopped. And you know, it's like it's not like we need to kiss his shoes. We need to understand that. You know, you understand what he stands for, and that's what that's what they are. You know, it doesn't matter what. I mean, I wouldn't even care if they're not doing gigs now. It doesn't mean anything. It's just like they they have that moment of time. And that's what that's what matters all to me. Um, what do you think? Do you think pe the battle scene should come back alive? I, mean, do I don't know. I think that um, you see, DJ, there's no DJ battle anymore, no MC battle. No I know. It's, it's battle. pretty sad. I think that would be good for a DJ battle to do. You know, what I feel like sometimes I feel like in this country, like people do things for a long time, and then when they stop doing it, no one else gives a fuck. Like I know I did that DJ battle for a long time and really helped. To, to generate some interest but when I stopped doing it no one else even tried I think it's bullshit like when JC did that that um, MC competition and even though he's not really that well respected you know let's be, brut it. let's be brutally honest about it at least he was doing it you know and when he stopped doing it what no one's gonna do one now at least he was doing it what's the what we we stopped doing the summit then it, even then no one wants to do it anymore it seems like bullshit to me it seems like a lot of the new school of hip hop, just sitting back waiting for things to happen. Fucking do it yourself. Goodness sake, that's what we did. Mm. You know, when we, when Ali did summer, we did it because no one else was doing it. Why was, why wasn't anyone else doing it? Well, no one else was doing it, so we did it. And why did I put out major flags? Well, no one else was fucking doing it, so I did it. So we, is everyone else just supposed to? All oh, here's this. Oh, why isn't there another summer? Well, why don't some fucking do something, man? Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it, dude. I, I started We're, doing nothing. You he's from Pukakoi. I'm from Papakura. Did this book. Dude, man, we just did what we had to do. You did make this DVD. That's what I'm talking about. It's real important <laughs> because if you didn't do it, then he's gonna do it. Does everyone gonna sit around and go, "Oh, I wish there was a street DVD"? Yeah. Do it. Stop bitching and moaning and fucking do it. It's real simple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, anything else you wanna add? Like, no, you've got us some real No, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. I mean, what about you, Cuz? What's the one thing you would, you would have done 20 years ago that you would do now and the one thing you wouldn't do now that you would have done years, 20 years ago? So the question again? What's the one thing? <laughs> what are what is the one thing, thing you would have done 20 years ago but you wouldn't do it now yeah. and vice versa? <laughs> That's a fucking awesome question. That's a really, really good question. One thing I don't do now that I used to do years ago was go on a three day weekend bender <laughs> you know I used to go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday and collapse on Sunday I just can't do that anymore just too tired, too old <laughs> but I used to do that a lot because I'm from Papakura and we had this club down the road called The Forge and then we used to go there every Thursday, Friday, Saturday I can't not do that anymore uh, and back then what I do now that I didn't what I do now that I didn't do back then is I wash my money because I just in a situation now where 
you know, I have to support kids. And it's, um, some people abuse that and some people don't look after that. Well, that's paramount in my life. So that's probably the difference between me and now and then. I know that's pretty boring, but that's me. But uh, yeah, I used to pretty hard, party pretty hard, like real hard. But that's what, that's, there was nothing else to do in Kura. <laughs> Um, what are your favourite Jordans? My favourite Jordans are 10s and 12s. 10s <laughs> and 12s. And the reason why is because I went to see Jordan play a few times. And the first time I saw him play in a real big game, he was wearing a 12. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Now the first, the, so the reason I like 10s is because when he was warming up, he was wearing 10s. And when he played, he was wearing 12s. So that's like this one. They're my favourites. How many pair of Jordans do you have? Me? I don't know. 250 maybe something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> but that's that's if I have a hobby it's that that and rugby. Yeah. Do you, do you play rugby? No. Do you like play, play rugby? rugby? <laughs> no, no, I used to play basketball a lot though. So I have like I've liked Michael Jordan for a long time. Been there in Chicago a few times, specifically to go to his restaurant, go to see him play. Yep. Did you ever want to become a rapper? Ah, uh, yep. But I was useless. Like when I think. I have explored all the elements. At some point in time, I tried to be a graffiti writer, and I was, I wasn't too bad, but I wasn't great. I was a breaker at one point, and I was pretty average. I tried to rap, and I was shit, and that's how I figured out I wanted to be a DJ. And my dad was a DJ, and it kind of came naturally. Yeah. <laughs> What's different in hip hop now? Like, the difference between when like Up Hard Pussy was coming up and to seeing people like the Wanderers trying to make it like um, Flo's been around for like 10 years you know now he's going in by himself what's like do you I see the difference now between the I older think groups the and the difference groups? now I think the difference now is everyone's forgotten how to have fun I think that everyone is so consumed in this country with bitching and moaning about all kinds of shit that they have forgotten that we have heaps of fun we used to have so much fun and I, no, no, it's not true. I still do. But I see a lot of angry, unhappy people out there that have completely missed the point. Because this culture was primarily born from the streets, but it was about having fun too. The only reason that Cool Hook, cool Hook dragged those speakers out in 1973 was to have a party. That was the reason he did it. He didn't do it because he wanted to show how cool he was. He did it to have a party at a block, you know? Sedgwick and Cedar, that's the reason he did it, and I think that people have completely missed that. If I, if I, I think in, you know, I'm thinking about Four Corners, they get it. Four Corners, they get it. Because, you know, when I'm with them, they're always happy to be doing what they're doing. They're on tour, they're having fun, making records. They seem to be, you know, I'm thinking about that, I'm like, they get it. You know, I don't know who doesn't get it, I'm just saying, I, I think that there's, we're missing the point, man. I go, to, I go to a club, and I play records, and people have heaps of fun, and then the only thing this rap dude has to say to me was I played a whole bunch of cheesy jiggy songs. I'm like, did you? Are we in the same club? You know, did you not see that everyone's fucking happy? If you didn't want to listen to it, go to a different club. That's what I'm saying. People are missing the point, man. Like, it, you know, I don't know. I think that's the, the, fun, the fun is missing for some people. Not for me. I'm, I'm loving it. It's good fun. Yeah, people are moaning too much instead of out there doing it Dude, that's all we've ever been about. You say it's hard. That's all we do. If we're going to do it, we're going to do a mixtape CD play. We just did it. I didn't sit around going, well, there's no mixtape CD plays or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we just, <laughs> for fuck's sake, man. You know? Right, so we just do it. Look at you. Street heavy DVD. Just <laughs> decided to do it, so you do it. It's all good. That's not like a broken record. <laughs>